Christ, installment number, what is this, five, six, something like that? I don't know. The order's so messed up by this point, just based on the order of these movies. I have no idea. Now, this is an interesting one, because up until a certain point last week, I said that this was technically going to be the beginning of a new timeline, right? Because the famously, the Wikipedia page says that this movie wipes out the previous three movies that we watch and takes place immediately after two. But your friend Johnny Mana, obviously the one, the only Johnny Mana, our first ever guest our on the first podcast. first ever guest. Started our out first out. ever podcast. He brought up something really interesting that this movie doesn't technically rule out anything from the previous movie. So it could, in theory, still take place after Curse of Michael Myers. I just wanted to know what your take on that was before we got this started. I don't know if I have one. I need to see it. I don't like to read ahead. I like to enjoy the surprise of the moment, as you know. Right. So I, I have no idea. I it, know it, this timeline and chronology gets convoluted. I don't quite know if we're there yet, but we're going to find out. Yeah, we're going to find out. Look, I, all I'm going to say is this. Like, look, we know that it, we, we were under the implication that Laurie Strode was dead. But if this movie doesn't have anything that directly wipes out or countermands or retcons anything from the previous trilogy, aside from Loomis being dead which obviously we know that it was not possible for Donald Pleasant to be in this movie considering that he um, yeah. that he passed obviously. shortly shortly after the previous movie. We're going to find out. So here is on the 20th anniversary. So if the beginning of 4 was the 10-year anniversary, then now we have the 20-year anniversary aptly titled H2O Halloween 20 years later. Stay tuned. Love it. Oh, Langdon this time. Finally, we're not in Haddonfield. Particularly egregious for some of those slasher movies. As, they, 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 as that's the time period they gave us I Know What You Did Last Summer and Urban Legend. Oh, my God. Joseph Gordon, leave it? Well, he's dead. Yeah, I don't know why you closed the door behind you. I also don't know why you, I don't know why you make yourself known. Yeah, right? I, I never understood that. Skate. Hockey skate to the face. Wow. Yo, Josh Hartnett's her kid? Wow. That's actually crazy. She's like, that motherfucker jacked my car. There we go. Hey, my, my time ticker is still <laughs> on point. With her long, slender legs, they climbed high up a skirt, leading to two tumultuous, round, melon breasts. I'm not even going to have a reaction to that. I'm just going to let that scene speak for itself. That is water. Don't try and fool me to that Chardonnay. That is water. The 90s was a big proponent of, like, you know, that f of, like, a lot of, like, the, those overblown, overly lit scenes. It didn't really have, like, kind of the darky, the griminess and the eeriness of, like, the 80s movies, you know? Is this a Halloween movie or is this Cruel Intentions? That sucks. Yeah, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Michael wants some. That's All right, crazy. So keeping him around. That's actually crazy. That's how you know that LL Cool J had some clothes. He's like, yo, I'm not letting no Michael Myers fool take me out. Was that Scream or was that... I know what you did last summer. I think it was Scream. Come on. You can't seduce a man like that and then just not, uh, and then just like bored with details from your life. Jesus Christ, dude, you were not kidding. We're damn near an hour into this movie and nothing's happened yet. Strange car, all the signs there. Yeah, nothing at all to be upset about. Okay, that's the worst Halloween mask. I'm sorry. That's the worst <laughs> one. That's, that's awful. Through the head? Oh. Oh, okay, the neck, gotcha. Damn. <laughs> wow. Wow. That sucks. <laughs> the California state flag. Wow. They're literally just fucking with us. She stabbed him with an axe. She impaled him with a flagpole. Oh, what the fuck? At least she knows. That'll work. Because that worked so well the last 15 times they ran him over. Nice. Wow, one queen, clean swipe. Queen, clean sweep. Pity it couldn't, you know, stop him. Because, you know, they still made more movies. So, pity that, wow, so this movie automatically gets retconned by the following movie. Because, you know, Michael Myers can come back from a lot of things. I don't know if he can come back from a from, from, from a clean sweep like that. I, 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 From what I remember about reading up on Resurrection, there's like a lot of retconning in the beginning that shows, oh, it wasn't really Michael that she decapitated. You no, know, it was somebody else. But that was... Halloween H2O 20 years later and already off the bat I gotta say not impressed not impressed at all that was I don't even want I, I can't even call that a movie really that was nothing but like just an hour of just boring exposition and build up to a half an hour of I'd say a pretty cool sequence but it was so weighed down and like 
really bad cliches, really boring, uninteresting characters. The kills, I guess, were creative, but ended up just not feeling so after a while. I don't know. Like, it, what, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think it. I understood what it was trying to do, but I don't think it succeeded in in trying to do it. Uh, the homages to the first one were cool. Obviously, they were going to be there, but I thought that's really all it had going for it was like you know the seven stabs, the seven shots from Loomis falling down onto the table, falling off the balcony. All those comparisons to the first one. I, I think there was just too much melodrama. <laughs> too much setup and not enough Michael in between like we gotten with the previous installments that I think made all of them up until now really enjoyable films really fun watches in their own yeah. unique way and I yeah. just don't feel like I can walk out of here saying that this was in- as enjoyable as the other ones you know what I mean yeah, I agree. I think the biggest difference between this one and the 2018 one, right? Obviously, the 2018 one, in a weird way, serves a similar function to this movie. This ends up being the 40 year anniversary one, but also retconning all the rest of the movies out of other movies out of existence. Is that well, the the 2018 one was very much an homage to the entirety of the Halloween franchise, as opposed to just the first one. This one is, I feel like, just trying to shamelessly capture the magic of the first one, but in a really boring and just uninteresting way. Like the first one had a lot of creativity behind it. The first one was really innovative because it was super different. Like you would really never seen anything before it at the time you know it was kind of like the whole, the whole thing about slasher movies in general was that they were looked down upon as like these b movies right the texas chainsaw massacre the thing that had set that movie apart in the 70s from halloween was the fact that that felt like almost like a purely grindhouse movie you know and it felt like so different and like halloween was so different and so innovative at the time but this is after like 20 years of these types of movies and it just it, it just it doesn't have the same gusto you know on top of a lot of already terrible 90s like i said the late 90s are arguably what almost killed the horror genre you know and that's before we even get into the 2000s with the first attempted at horror reboots but as far as i'm concerned final thoughts this is easily my least favorite Halloween movie. I'm only giving this like, I can't even give this full two. I'm giving this two, two out of five stars. Yeah, I think I'm right there with you just because I do think that Jamie Lee Curtis was a very strong performer in this movie. I enjoyed the way she played it. And I, I do think that the actor who portrayed Michael in this was, I think it was all really well done. It just wasn't as exciting or suspenseful as its predecessors. And I also think it's going to take me a little while to get old, o- over the um, amazing sort of and and thick plot behind and backstory behind Michael that we had developed for the past uh, five, six movies. So, yeah, I mean, we're entering a new era. And I think with that, new expectations may have to be formed because I just this didn't even come close to topping the journey we just went on. And it's sad. So, yeah, two out of five stars as well for me. Yeah, like I said, this is this is the second timeline. Well, we have yet to determine it, right? Because obviously we we have this one in Resurrection, and then obviously we'll have the Rob Zombie ones, which are, are their own spinoff universe, and then we'll have um what's it called? Then then we'll have the reboot movies, right? So the reboot, right? We're getting Halloween kills, and then we'll have Halloween ends next year. So we're gonna have by the time this is done, we're gonna have like three main timelines and like two spinoff timelines. Like that, this is all over the place as far as far as just universes and chronologies goes. But next week, we got finally. The one that I've been waiting for, Buster Rhymes and Michael Myers in Halloween Resurrection is next week. But people, that was Halloween H2O 20 years later. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to leave this video a like and click the subscribe button. Be sure to also click the bell next with that way you guys get notified every time we put up new content. Chris, with our little red and blue contrast that we've got going on this episode. I, I, li- I like the way it worked. I, I wasn't planning on it, but it kind of ended up working out anyways. Where can the good people find you? Yeah, they can find me all across social media at Christian Ivanko. Ivanko spelled E-V-A-N-K-O. I make music, which you can find through the link in my bio. It's available on all major streaming services. Some of those you might recognize as Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google, the whole nine. They all pretty much have music aside from Spotify and their title. So go and look that up and give it a listen. I'd really appreciate it. As well as uh, check out my other podcast, Talk On With Andrew and Chris. We, we uh, interview artists and talk about music life and everything in between. I think you guys will enjoy it. It's talking the same way we spell it here. Available on all the same platforms that the Talking TV podcast is. 
Again, that's through the link in my bio, and I hope to see you guys there. And I also hope you go and follow and support my co-host in all of his endeavors and sarcastic posts. Dom, where can they find you? Well, call me a member of the Blue Man Group because you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Movie Nerd Reviews. Also, you can follow me posting every single day, twice a day on the Talking TV podcast pages on Facebook and Instagram. We'll be back next week for Halloween Resurrection, the last installment in the next timeline. As always, people, stay spooky. Watch more fucking movies in 12 seasons in a short film. We'll see you guys. Later.